Eleni, we're here today at the Plymouth Marine Laboratory. Uh, within this building, there's lots of different marine scientists working on lots and lots of different aspects of the oceans. But you're an economist, so tell me, what are you doing here at the laboratory? Well, in economics, we always have a primary resource. That's whether it be land, wood, water, and the marine environment is, is just a primary resource as well. We need, in the economy, primary resources to um, allow us to produce goods and services. And so what we're interested as economists is how do we use these resources? Resources uh, globally is uh, scarce. And so we have to understand where we can benefit the most from these resources, whether they're coming into the market and producing goods and services, or whether they're actually conserved. And they don't come into the market, but people still benefit from it. So for instance, if you go for a walk along the coast. So we're very interested in understanding how the marine environment is used, how it's changing because of that use through um, human use, but also through climate change. And, and that helps us to make policy and um, management decisions. Okay, so I can see how you'd um, have the ideas of uh, resources in the marine environment. Fisheries, for example, is a really clear um, example of what a resource might be that comes from the sea. But how does satellite data fit into this picture? Why are you using that? Well, social economists, uh, we've never really looked at um, satellite data for our research it's a very niche market where a social economist would look at natural um, natural data specifically off the screen. But this allows us to think about how we use the marine environment in a more holistic and integrative way. So if we just look at the screen here, um, we're looking at chlorophyll concentration. So we're seeing from satellite data what the marine environment looks like when we look at chlorophyll. So that shows us the phytoplankton and the productivity of the waters. Okay. Productivity meaning how the water can support food webs. So your fisheries and that goes up to higher mammals such as whales. Okay. So when we look at this, it doesn't very it doesn't mean much at all to a socioeconomist. So the socioeconomist mm. says, well, how can I take this information and make it valid for yeah. policy, for marine management? And this is something I understand. I can understand ocean colour data. But how does this fit in with, you know, something that happens on the land or something that happens with people? Because this is tiny little plants in the sea. What does that mean for somebody who lives on this coastline? Well, it's important because we can start overlaying socioeconomic data. So for instance, these are plots of aquaculture, active aquaculture farms in Scotland. And already we can start to see a very particular mapping over here. So we're looking at Scotland, we're seeing the chlorophyll concentrations, and here we're seeing the aquaculture farms. And we can see that on the west coast of Scotland, there's a lot of aquaculture farms. Now that's not just because of the water, there's also sheltered areas there in lochs, which are prime positions for aquaculture farms, mm -hmm. particularly salmon farming, but also okay. your shellfish farming. So what it allows us firstly to identify is where are your waters good for this kind of sector? So the sector being an industry. Mm -hmm. So the economists will say, well, what would the optimum be for these aquaculture farms? Where should they be sited to give the most production of a good, so your, your fish or your shellfish, that would allow these communities to survive? So communities within any economy is really defined by the type of work people do, mm -hmm. the productivity, so how much they produce for the economy, employment. And if you were to overlay, just for instance, this map, so this is another socioeconomic data map, and it provides us a scaled um, identity of where the highest employment is for the marine environment. So if we look over here, um, Aberdeenshire has the highest percentage of people employed in the marine sectors, okay. that's including aquaculture. And then you see the highlands are also very important. Mm -hmm. And you see that the highlands are important for marine sector where the aquaculture mm -hmm. sectors are. But then one more, one more map, and this map provides um, again a color coded variation where we can classify communities by either being urban or rural. Mm -hmm. And with the dark purple, we can identify that these communities are highly rural and, and where they are lighter, they're highly urbanized. Okay. So again, it, it's really important to understand mm -hmm. how the marine environment is changing, what kind of sectors it can support, in this instance aquaculture, and then what that means to communities. 
Yeah, that's really, really interesting. If you go back to the previous um, map that you had, what strikes me here is that you can see that there's a lot of aquaculture on this coast, but not on the other coast. But on that coast, there's apparently a lot of marine related industry or um, businesses anyway. Do you know on that coastline what it is that the people are involved in that relates to the marine environment? So predominantly um, in the north North Sea, we have oil and gas platforms mm. that happened. It started up in the 1970s, but um, gained a lot of growth in the 1980s. Shipping lanes coming from Europe, so bringing over produce. We also have fisheries. Okay. So again, these waters are also quite highly um, exposed. Mm. Uh, they're not as sheltered at the, as the West Coast. Mm. But also you have quite highly urbanized areas again. Mm. So aquaculture um, took off in the west coast of Scotland because of the sparser population, the ideal environmental conditions. Mm. But to bring us back to the satellite data, it's really important that socioeconomists start to understand the natural environment through a direct mm. source. And that's really to help um, form a more integrative research to the questions that we are, are facing us in an ever-changing world. Mm. So we having um, increase in population which demands food security. Um, there's a lot of people now moving to the coast and so there's a lot mm. of conflict in how these environments are used and also with climate change. So when a social economist starts to look, look at what could be the best sectors for a community with the insight that a satellite data can um, inform, uh, will add to the, the decisions, we can understand which sectors might be best placed. Okay. So it sounds like you could use this sort of data if you're wanting to plan or form policy. So is this something that governments are interested in to look at and say, you know, should this be an area where we can help encourage aquaculture or is this an area we should be encouraging tourism or um, is there ways that they make those decisions from your background as an economist? The, the agendas for blue growth are really driving a lot of economies, economies that border ocean seas and, and coastal lines that they have. And this growth strategy is to ensure that the resources are accessed mm. equitably, they are managed sustainably. And so in order to understand exactly that question, what sectors can a marine environment support sustainably over time? And that's an inclusive economic growth question. They would look at what sectors are there at the moment mm -hmm. and then um, optimize, so estimate the revenue that could be generated from that sector, estimate the number of jobs that could be supported, and all of that needs to be surrounded by what's happening in the marine environment. So we did another study, I've got one more, one more map to show, and this doesn't have the satellite information data, and you can see the stark contrast. This is very static, it doesn't have that dynamic feel to it of what's happening in the marine environment, but it also provides quite interesting information. So again, we've taken Scotland, and we've highlighted where fisheries occur, and the blue part of the pie chart are where fish are caught with vessels which are below 10 meters mm -hmm. and the orange sectors are over 10 meters. Mm -hmm. But what, why this is important is that it also highlights in the highlands quite um, uh, middle to most deprived income. So again, communities which are highly reliable on a resource. But this doesn't show you what's happening because of climate change. Mm. We know with climate change that chlorophyll concentrations would differ. And when you have a difference in chlorophyll concentrations, you're also your fisheries start to change. So it, it highlights that when we talk about holistic management and changes to ensure that these communities are resilient mm. and not considered vulnerable, that um, the, the natural environment mm. is taken into, into account. So this really is a way of not only bringing together physics information about the sea, for example, it's also biology, but then it's going a step further and bringing that into society as well. Yeah, so it, it starts to translate that what's happening in the natural environment to a socioeconomic application. It, it, it makes sense to policymakers, to managers, why do we have to understand what's happening in the marine environment, whether it be naturally incurred 
or whether humans are, are having a place in changing that marine environment. So also, when we talk about fisheries, there's a concern of overfishing. Well, we can start to see where the areas or the hot spots for fishery nurseries could be. So that could be a good area to conserve. And um, also when we think about blue growth in the marine environment, there's a big push for renewable energies. Mm. So again, where would the renewable energies need to be cited? You mm. can look at your marine environment to understand which are your most productive waters, where those would be good for conservation or ensuring that there is fisheries or aquaculture there. And then you could look at areas which are not as productive to place your offshore wind farms.